morning, church. Good morning, everyone. Let's go ahead and rise. Prepare our hearts. And as always, we welcome you here to the house of the Lord. And as we say every Sunday, we're very thankful for the Lord giving us another day to praise His holy name. Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and open prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glorify God. We give you thanks, Lord, for giving us another day to worship your name, Lord, with the church of God. May you be exalted in this place here today, Lord Father God. Any sins, any burdens, anything that may be hindering our hearts, Lord, any distractions that may even come to our minds, Lord, we just lay it all to your feet. May our attention and our eyes be focused all on you, Lord. May we just be here in this place and may we glorify you and you alone, Lord Father God. Bless this time, Lord Father God. And may we just open up our hearts to praise your, to praise your name, Lord, in song and listen to your word. This morning, Lord, and we praise on and glory. Amen and amen. How many more of the Lord is going to be called all of them? Yeah, 
good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. There's no better place to be than to be here. Amen. With all the saints coming and praising and worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. It's also such a wonderful privilege to be able to sing uh, to the King of Heaven. Amen. And to bless His holy name. That's so awesome. It is the privilege that has been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And not only will we do it here and now, but we will do this forever and ever. And I'm looking forward to that because Jesus is worthy of it. He is worthy of all our devotion, all our worship, and all our praise. Amen. And I'm excited about entering into that, in that place of uh, of. The, the place where our worship will be without flaw before God. Amen? Praise God. Because even now, we worship the Lord, but sometimes we get distracted, huh? But nonetheless, uh, in heaven, there will not be no distractions, man. It's going to be pretty, pretty awesome, and He's going to get all the glory and praise that He deserves. Praise the Lord. Just real quickly, some announcements. I want to remind you, for all the guys, we have a men's Bible study this Thursday here at the church at 6.30. So, fellas... We encourage you to come on out, come and be blessed, be encouraged, amen. Uh, Brother Jojo will be teaching that day, so I'm looking forward to that, amen. Praise God. Also, just a quick reminder for uh, Amelo, uh, for the missions up in, in Mexico. Uh, we have till the end of the month, I think they're making a trip on December 4th. So if we can have everything in uh, by the end of November, I think it's the 30th is the last day of November, uh, toys, try to keep them $5 and under, boys and girls. Uh, also, we're going to get uh, beans, rice, uh, oil, flour, that type of stuff. Uh, big bulk is probably the best, best for, 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 for your money too. You know, maybe Costco and Sam's Club, Sam's Club is a good place to go and get them at a really good, uh, decent price. Amen. So if you guys want to be a blessing for that, uh, please uh, just keep in mind, uh, we have, uh, what, about two, three more weeks to do that. And uh, it will be a, a tremendous blessing. Amen. They'll share with us everything that the Lord uh, is doing and has done too with that. Amen. Uh, also, on the 20, uh, the day before uh, Thanksgiving, we're going to have a Thanksgiving service. So we're going to just be able to just thank the Lord. And if anybody would like to sing some specials too, it would be an opportunity to do just that. We'll just have some pastries and some finger foods. Uh, so we encourage you again. To come and get your praise on, amen, give your thanksgiving to the Lord for everything that, uh, again, that he has done. We, we are, we ought to be grateful for many, many, many things, amen. Just like that song we were just singing, uh, bless, bless, you know, bless, blessed be the, the, the name of the Lord. In the good and in the bad, we're going to bless the name of the Lord, amen. If you guys remember uh, Jesus talking about being blessed, and, and some, in, in that blessing also, would be persecution and hardships and all that. So take it joy if, you know, even if we have to go through hardships for the name of Christ because it brings glory unto Him. Amen. That would be a tremendous blessing for us to be able to, to suffer for, for the name of Christ. And, and who knows, uh, maybe that's something that we'll be seeing here in the near future. Uh, we're not sure. We know that God is in control of all things. But, uh, but regardless, amen, Jesus is on the throne. We belong to Him. And that is all we need to know, amen, that we are His. Praise the Lord. All right, so uh, another, is that the last, I think that's the last uh, uh, announcement. Okay, so the kids, you can go to your classrooms, go and be blessed, little ones, and bigger ones. That's all right. You guys can move up. It's not a big deal. <laughs> you know, you guys don't want to. Okay, that's fine. This is where this is where this is the splash zone right here. So if you want to <laughs> come up to the splash zone, now I don't think you want to get splashed that way. Huh? <laughs> I notice the older I'm getting, the more I'm spitting. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Okay. Oh, everybody watching on Facebook. God bless you guys. 
I know that you guys don't have to worry about that. <laughs> but praise God. Well, we're gonna we're gonna dive into to God's word today. You guys know we've been going through the uh, through the Gospel of John. We are in chapter seventeen now. It's been a tremendous journey going through uh, this gospel. Amen. It's been a tremendous blessing. Praise God. I just want to just encourage the church too, as as you guys know what the whole political realm is, uh, the way it is today. Uh, just keep praying. Amen. Um, Whatever God's plan is, we know that he's the one that brings down and sets up uh, kings and presidents and leaders. And so we realize that we're, we're trusting the Lord uh, for all of these things, whatever the outcome may be. Amen. And it is our responsibility to continue to pray, pray for our leadership and, and, and pray for, for God's will and God's plan and pray for God's wisdom for us as God's people in how we handle whatever changes uh, may come. Uh, to our lives and our surrounding. Amen. That's so very important because at the end of the day, we are called to exalt and to glorify Jesus Christ. No matter what our surroundings may be, that does not change. Amen. So church, let's just keep praying. Keep looking to Jesus. Amen. As I said before, and, you know, continue to pray for what's going on right now. I think there's a lot of room for prayer. Amen. Uh, prayer, pray for the president and what's taking place with, with all that's going on right now too. And, and, you know, just prayer for our country. Amen. So with that said, let's get into the word of God here. Uh, if, if you guys remember last uh, last Sunday, as uh, kind of closed up, uh, closing up chapter uh, 16, and Jesus was sharing with the disciples uh, again that he was he was going to die and that he was going to be arrested and and that but he wasn't that he was going to come back and, you know, kind of share with you some things how the disciples, they knew that Christ was the Messiah. They just didn't really, they, they, they didn't have a clear picture of what he was communicating. Amen. And, you know, even with us, many times as we look to the future, there are some things that, that we may not see so clearly of what God is, is communicating to us uh, about end times events. And as I shared with you last week, but we continue to trust him. Amen. And we continue to move forward just as the disciples did. And the, and the further we go out, the more revelation we're going to have too. Amen. Just like the disciples, as things progressed, as, 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 as the, the life of Christ moved forward and everything that happened, then they received greater, greater revelation and they understood what Jesus was communicating to them. Amen. And so here in chapter 17, it is, it is a prayer of Jesus. Not only does he pray for himself, but he prays for the apostles or his disciples, the 11, because remember Judas betrayed Christ and also prays for all those that would believe afterward. That is you and I. That's what the whole uh, chapter 17 deals with. And remember, this is just uh, probably more than anything hours before Jesus goes into the Garden of Gethsemane and there he is arrested and, 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 is, and is to uh, be tried and crucified. And so we, you know, just taking a look at this, we see uh, how, how, how Christ just, uh, you know, gives his heart unto the Father, not only about himself, but uh, upon the work that he is doing. And that, that includes you and I. So this is a prayer for us, as we see also in these passages. And, and we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be teaching them probably for the next two, three weeks. So, uh, it's a, you know, it's a pretty good chunk of a, of a chapter here. And many things that need to be said in regards to Jesus' prayer but I want you to keep in mind that uh, this is our high priest, Jesus Christ, the eternal high priest who is, who is praying uh, for his people. Amen. That's you and I. And so that's pretty, pretty amazing. That's a tremendous blessing. Amen. To have that in mind. Amen. So what I want to do, I want to go ahead and just read the whole chapter. And, but I'm only going to focus this, I'm, I'm only going to focus on the first uh, five verses of the chapter. But I want to read the whole chapter because I want us for the next three weeks to really allow th th this prayer to really fill our hearts and to remember it and, uh, and, and to be blessed by it. Amen. And be encouraged by, by this. All right. So let us pray as, uh, as, as we read uh, God's word. Father, we want to just thank you, uh, first of all, for your amazing love for us. Thank you, God, that you are mindful of your people. Thank you for looking down and humbling yourself uh, from heaven and looking into this world. And not only that, 
sending your son, the word that became flesh, to become sin, to die for uh, the sins of the world. God, you have been so amazing and so great. And this is your power. This is your glory that you are demonstrating. All of this that we are seeing in your word. Help us to see that more and more as the days go by, Lord. We want our minds and our hearts to be fixed with our eyes looking into eternity, to the eternal one, looking to you, God. We want the example of Christ to be in all lives and how he lived, uh, devoted and looking to you, Father. We want to do the same thing. So speak to our hearts and strengthen us today, uh, Lord, that we would do the same, uh, regardless of, of where our life is at now and where it is going, whether uh, it is in a sense of good or bad, according to uh, how our life may be. Lord, may we, may we see the example of our Lord as He is before you, Father, and seeking you. May we also do the same, trusting in your glory, trusting in your power and in your word for our lives. And so I just pray that you would bless the church today, that those who are listening online to God, that you would minister to them, especially those who do not know you, that they would see glory, that they would see Christ exalted, that they would see the Father exalted today, Lord. And we just thank you, God, and that they would see the heart of God and how he feels about those who put their trust in his son. Lord, we pray that you would open eyes and hearts that people would see and believe and bow their knees and their hearts before you Lord and trust in you as God and as Savior and we're asking that you would do a mighty work Lord God we just thank you again Father I pray that as always that you would help me that you would use me to teach your word and to preach it in spirit and in truth Lord and we just thank you right now for your precious and wonderful word help us to give ears to what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to us minister to our hearts this morning and Father I pray that we would give reverence to you in this place, Lord God, that we would seek only to glorify you, Lord, that the attention will only be unto you, Lord God. You be lifted up in this place. Turn our hearts to you, God, we pray, and we just thank you again. And Father, we also pray, as your people have given, Lord, that you would continue to bless uh, their gifts, Lord, their offerings and their tithes that they give out of a cheerful heart, Lord. Bless your people. We thank you again for this ministry. May it be that light on the hill, Lord, and help us, Lord, that we would grow for your glory, God. That is our desire. We want to see you exalted, and we just thank you again. And we ask you these things in the name that is above every name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And God's people said, amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Again, if anybody chooses to give, you can do so in the, in the agape boxes that we have here. If not, you can do on our church app. You can look for it on, uh, what is it? Uh, what's the iPhone one? The, 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 app, app, the app store, Google Play, download uh, the Eternal Living Word to You app, and you can give through there if you would like to do so. Amen. And if you don't want to give, you don't have to give, neither. All right? <laughs> but praise the Lord. We are blessed when you do. And uh, again, let's just turn to God's word here. And I want to, uh, again, I, like I said, I want to read through the whole chapter. We're going to come back and look at these first, uh, first uh, uh, five verses. I uh, hope nobody's in a hurry to go home, all right? Because we have come here today to bless the Lord, amen, with our hearts and our ears. So let's read. Beginning in uh, verse 1, it says, uh, Jesus spoke these words, lifted his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son also may glorify you. As you have given Him authority over all flesh, that He should give eternal life to as many as you have given Him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given uh, me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of this world. They, they were yours, you gave them to me, and they kept your word. Now they, now they have known all the things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them and have known them uh, and, and have known surely that I have come forth uh, from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. 
I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All are mine, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may uh, have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that you also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me that they may be perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them and you as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and uh, and, and these have known that you sent me, and I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. Wow, that's pretty encouraging, amen. After, you know, when we hear the conversations going on in chapter 16 and the disciples, how they're feeling and Jesus telling them, hey, do you believe, are you sure? And, and now Jesus sets out this beautiful prayer to, in, you know, to encourage and, and to ensure their hearts that Jesus is whom he says he is. You know, this prayer is about the deity of Christ, is reflecting who he is. But it's also a prayer uh, to encourage the disciples and us to be reminded that we belong to God. And if we belong to God, we will be kept by Him. Amen. And, and, you know, it's just, and I could just, you know, if, if if, if we were at that time with the disciples hearing this prayer, I believe it would be like we're hearing God's heart for us. Jesus was communicating to them the heart of the Father and how the Father felt about them as well. Amen. And that's beautiful. It also communicates uh, the work that Jesus has for the church. Amen. For his disciples. And, and all this is about glory. It's about glorifying the Father. It's about Christ being glorified. And, and eventually it's about the church being glorified in Christ and the Father. And that's such a beautiful picture of what we see here of what God is doing. And so when, when we look at the whole work and the whole scope of re- God's redemption, his plan to redeem sem- uh, sinners from the world, it, it, is, it is a purpose of, of, of glorifying God. Amen. It's pretty awesome. The fact that Jesus goes to the cross, it glorifies God. Amen. The fact that we believe in Christ and in the Father it's glorifying God. So this, you know, it's, it's all about the glory of God. It's all about exalting Him. It's all about praising Him. It's all about honoring Him. How many can say amen to that? And so may that be part of our hearts and our minds each day. That we would seek to honor and to glorify God. In, in the way that we live and, and what we do. Amen? 
And so I, I want to go back here and we're going to all I want to look at is verses one through five uh, in these in, in, in Jesus's prayer. And this prayer is mainly focused upon himself. He is praying for himself. Amen. Pretty awesome. And, and, and again, just, just thinking about, you know, 2,000 years ago, in this moment, Jesus was praying for you. Isn't that pretty cool? Think about it. There's a prayer for you right here that Jesus had. And let me tell you, in the book of Romans chapter 8, uh, I think chapter 8, verse 34, it says that Christ continues to be our high priest and he continues to be our intercessor. Isn't that awesome? Isn't it good to know for us as believers that Christ is, is continuing to pray for you and I? Amen. And uh, how many know that his prayers are answered? And that's pretty awesome. So you think about what Jesus is praying about here today. It, we have to also realize that the things that Jesus prays for will be answered. Amen. And so that ought to bring a lot of encouragement and strength to us. I'm sure as it was in, in, in many sense to the disciples uh, here as well. When I think about this whole idea of, of Christ praying for us, I remember uh, when uh, Jesus had told Peter too that, that Satan has desired to sift him like wheat. Remember that? He says, Satan has asked for you. He wants to destroy your life. But Jesus says, but I have prayed for you. Amen? And says, and when you are restored, Strengthen the brethren. It was fixed. You know, Satan wanted to destroy Peter, but Jesus prayed for him. And I think about that for us too. I think about if, you know, sometimes, we, you know, we wonder, are people praying for me? And I'm sure we, 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 just to let you know, people are praying for you. Amen. But the, the highest part of, of prayer is knowing that Christ, our high priest, is in continual intercession for you and I. And that is pretty amazing. Amen. That's pretty awesome. Jesus, though he finished the work of redemption uh, uh, for in, in order for there to be access into his presence and that we might be saved. Christ is still ministering today and he's doing through he's doing so through prayer while he sits on the throne. Amen. And he is working in our lives continually through the Holy Spirit. And that's pretty, pretty awesome. Praise God. So we can stand assured of that, and that ought to bring great encouragement to us just to know that Jesus, our high priest, continues to pray for you and I. And that's pretty awesome. So let's take a look at these passages here. In, uh, again, in John chapter 17, in, in verse, uh, verse, let's begin in verse 1. And so one of the things I want to just mention here, just real quickly, is the fact that as Jesus began to pray, he lifted his eyes towards the heavens. This is a, a simple posture, amen? Again, he lifted his eyes towards the heavens as he began to pray. Uh, and when I think about this, I see by Christ doing this, he was communicating to his disciples what he already had revealed to them where the Father was. Where is the Father? He is in, in heaven, amen? You know, some make little of, of, of our, our posture but it does communicate something. Amen? And there are, are, are also many examples in the Bible of how people responded to God with their physical gestures, whether it's through prayer, or being on their knees, or prostrated before God, uh, or in worship and praise with lifted hands, clapping, singing, or, or, or just standing in awe of who God is. Amen? Or, or you know, the way we respond according to the truths about God and, and about us, you know, they, they do touch every fiber of our beings. That's why, you know, when we sing to God, we, 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 we lift up our hands or we look up or, you know, these are things because they are expressing something that we know. Amen. You know, the Bible talks about lift up your holy hands. Amen. Or we see these examples. Now, you know, these, these gestures and these postures that people do, and, and we see again, Jesus, he looks up to the heavens. These things don't make us more spiritual, but they do reveal something about what we understand about God and about ourselves. Amen. And, and it's important, I think, for us as, as believers. Amen. If, if there is 
postures in which we choose and to demonstrate how we feel about God's revealed truth or about God, it's not a problem. It's okay. If you want to get on your knees and pray, if you want to stand up and pray, if you, if you say, I like to go outside and pray and look to the sky, that's when I feel like God hears me the most. It's okay. I mean, I'll tell you one thing. God will hear you no matter what posture you're in, but it's okay. And Jesus does this. He, he looks to the heavens again because God is in heaven. Amen. There's, there's many times when, when I will go outside and I'll just look up, you know, and I'll just begin to talk to God, just, you know, and, you know, and, and that's all right. Now, probably our na- neighbors probably think I'm crazy, not Sue and Terry, but other neighbors probably think I'm crazy, I'm talking to God with my hands in the air and whatever, but, but it's a reality of something that we know within us. Amen? It, 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 we, are, we are moved by certain things, you know, sometimes just our situations where we find ourselves, we are so broken emotionally that we we fall to our knees before God and pray and cry out to him and it's okay God God sees you and he understands even in our emotional expressions unto him it's okay amen so that's just a little something said about in regards again to Jesus he looks to heaven amen he looked to heaven and then he says here he says father the hour has come. Okay, again, to glorify, glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. But again, the hour has come. And, and we have, I've already shared with you a few things in regards to what this meant in earlier chapters, as, as Jesus mentioned in chapter 12, that the, the hour had now come. Uh, but if you guys remember, there was times in, in, in Jesus' earlier ministry, he would say, the hour is coming. So Jesus was speaking again of this, of this time frame in which something would happen. And, and Jesus would say, that time is coming. And then re- remember the, the Pharisees and the religious leaders wanted to take Jesus and, and to kill him and to arrest him. But many times they would say there, but his hour was not yet. And so it would have been impossible for any of these religious leaders to, to, uh, to thwart God's plan in regards to this hour. Amen? Even if they, they had the desire to take him and, and, and to make things happen, it couldn't have happened because it was not the time. But now is the time. And Jesus is saying, now is the hour. The hour of what? The hour that Christ would take upon himself the sins of the world and the judgment of God and be put to death and on the third day raise again. The hour has now come that Jesus Christ would lay down his life and that he should be glorified. This hour is about glory. This hour is about Jesus Christ being glorified. This hour is about the Father being glorified through the Son. Amen? And the hour now has come. This is Jesus praying. Father, the hour has come that I would be glorified and that you might be glorified through me. So again there, glorify your son that your son may also glorify you. Glory just basically means to exalt, to honor, to praise. And as I have shared with you, the whole idea of redemption is about God's glory. It's about the glory of Jesus Christ. And it's about the glory also of those who will believe in him. Amen. You and I. We, we heard in the prayer there. Uh, what was it in verse uh, in verse 10? All are mine uh, and all, all and all mine are yours and yours are mine. And I am glorified in them. Verse 22. The glory which you have given me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. Father, glorify your Son, that your Son may also glorify you. Amen? And again, how would, uh, how would the Father be glorified on the behalf of Christ? This would be, again, in connection to the glorification of Jesus in His death and His, in his resurrection. In other words, it was necessary for Christ to die and be exalted or glorified in order, in order for the Father to be glorified. This is the way the, the exchange of glory w- was happening in all of this. Amen? And, and Jesus' prayer 
it's, it, it, it's, it's like it's already done. He hasn't went to the cross and died and, and resurrected from the dead yet and ascended into heaven, but it's as though it's already done. Glory is already being, being exchanged. Exaltation is already in, in the process here, amen? And I want you to think about that. I want you to think about the glory that is being exchanged between the Father and the Son in these passages. And this is Jesus' prayer. Because what does that mean for us as little human beings on planet Earth when we think about the Father, when we think about Christ, when we think about the Holy Spirit of God? Do we see the, the fact that there is glory going on here and then for us to say, I don't need Jesus. I don't need the Father. The Holy Spirit is just some impersonal force. Jesus is just some created being. How does that come against this prayer of the Son of God to the Father in regards to the glory of exchange that is happening here between them? And then for us to look at this situation, to look at God, to look at the Gospel, And to consider it as nothing. Man, that's pretty scary. Because we see here that the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that has all authority in heaven, the one with the snap of his finger can wipe the whole universe away. There is glory happening here in exchange with the Son. He said, I'm glorifying my Son. I want you to think about that. Because what do you think about Jesus today? What comes to your mind when you think about Jesus Christ? I hope it's glory. I hope it's being in awe of who He is. I hope you don't just see Him as another another being. Or maybe even one less than yourself. That would be a tragedy. Because here again, the Father is seeking to glorify His Son, and and the Son is seeking to glorify the Father. And for us to do less than that is treason against a holy and awesome and loving God. Amen? We don't want to be in, in that side. We want to be in the side of glory, glorifying God. Amen? And I hope that we are doing that. Uh, with our with our lives, you know another thing that I think about this and the, this idea of exchange of glory. Let's not forget the words of Jesus of the ministry of the Holy Spirit that we read a few chapters ago. Jesus says, "And the Holy Spirit will He will glorify Me, for He shall receive of Mine, of what's Mine, and all that is Mine is the Father's, and He will." Show it to you. What does this mean? It means that, you know, the the work of the Holy Spirit is going to be to glorify the Father and the Son. And that's why we as believers do the same because God's Spirit dwells inside of us. Amen? The work of the Spirit is to bring people into faith. Amen? Through the revelation of the gospel, the light being turned on, and people coming and bringing glory. Glory to the Father and the Son. So awesome. We see this happening within the triunity of God. Amen? The Father who sends His Son, when the Son is glorified, the Father is glorified. Then the Father and the Son send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's job is to glorify the Father and the Son. And He does so by the church. He does so by knees bowing to Jesus and saying, yes, you are God, you are King. Amen? Pretty awesome. So it's important for us to recognize this, that there is, there is glory that is being taken place here. It's praise, honor, and exaltation. And this is about what the gospel brings, redemption. Amen. Is for us to glorify, glorify God. 
So here, as we continue here, it says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your, your son also may glorify you. Verse, verse 2, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give life to as many as you have given him. So again here, uh, uh, Jesus is, is now in this prayer just repeating what the Father has already said about Jesus. Jesus is just repeating what God has already claimed about his son. You remember, as we've been going through the gospel, Jesus has been saying, all my words are the words of the Father. I speak, it's him speaking. Jesus makes references of himself, but these are the very things that God claimed about his own son. And so Jesus is just repeating what the Father already said in glorifying his son. And here he says, you have, I have all authority. I give eternal life to as many or to all that you have given me. That's pretty powerful. Amen. And again, so we, we, we realize that these things already have been spoken. And so let's take, let's take a look at a, a passage here in, in, in John chapter 5. And so this is similar to what Jesus is praying here. These words are very similar to what Christ is saying in these passages about him having all authority and him giving, uh, giving, being the one to give eternal life. So John chapter 5, verses 26 and 27, it says this, For as the Father has life in his Son, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Verse 39 and 40, same chapter. You search the Scriptures, for in them you think that you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. And what life, what is this life that Jesus is speaking about? It's his own life. He gives his life. That's eternal life. And Jesus is saying, again, I have all authority is mine. I'm the judge of all things. I'm the one that gives eternal life. He is only saying what the Father has already communicated about the Son. God the Father has glorified His Son. And Jesus is just saying it again in His prayer. And it is so. Amen? Jesus does have authority over all. Jesus is the one that gives uh, eternal life. And, and, these, and these things that Jesus is communicating about what, who he is and what he does speaks of his divinity, that Jesus Christ is God. Amen. And that's pretty powerful because that is a, of great encouragement to those who are around him hearing. Jesus has all authority. Jesus is the one that gives. Did you hear what he said? Are you hearing what Jesus is saying about himself? And it is true because the Father has spoken it so. Amen? Do we believe that? If we believe, then we are his disciples. Amen? If we believe the words of Christ, then we believe the words of the Father. Praise God. So, and, and, and again, as, as Jesus is praying this, this is something that is now, but it is also something that is to be. Because Christ is to be glorified after he dies and resurrects from the dead. But it's, it's, it's as though as if it's done. And the glory is, is being exchanged, is being given. That's pretty awesome. And, it's, and then he says again, you give the eternal life to all that you have given me. Think about this. The statement should have been especially encouraging to the disciples because Christ through his prayer revealed that they belong to the Father. Remember I share with you how beautiful this prayer is? It's communicating the way God thinks about them, the way the Father was thinking about the disciples. Amen? And the way God thinks about us. It's pretty awesome. He was telling them, you belonged to to God. Wow. I, can't, I was trying to think about a verse that we were singing earlier from one of the songs. Um, 
know, just the, the idea of God is for us. God is for us. Who can be against us? Amen? We belong to him. And that's, that's, that's an important part for us as believers to, to, to let that sink in. Amen? For us as, 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 uh, as disciples. And this, again, it was part of Jesus' prayer. He said it in verses 6. He says, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. The disciples here. Verses 9, I prayed for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me. They are yours. And then verse 12, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you have get, those you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Who is the son of perdition? That would be Judas Iscariot, amen? And so we see here, and that, that must have been very comforting, encouraging for the disciples to hear that, amen? And again, they have eternal life, uh, and they were also chosen for a specific task to be master builders upon Christ, by which too, we would be blessed and the world would be blessed through the work of these disciples. Amen. That's pretty awesome. Amen. God would use them to unveil the mystery of the gospel to the world, to us who would believe in Christ. Amen. And then again, it says there that... Uh, 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 Verses 3 here, let's continue in verse, verse 3. It says, And this is eternal life, that you may, that, uh, that you may, I'm sorry, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So what is eternal life? And, and you know, so here in this prayer, Jesus is revealing what eternal life is. And how, do, how does one get eternal life? It is about knowing God the Father, amen, and the one whom he sent to earth, Jesus Christ. But this knowing is not just in, in, a, in a way of having knowledge of. There's a lot of people who have knowledge that God exists, that there's a God, that there's, a, there's Jesus, things that he did. But this knowing here, it's speaking of a very personal relationship in fellowship with. Not just knowing information, not just having knowledge, but a, a, but a knowing of, of experience, experien, uh, experiential knowing. And that comes through a personal relationship with Christ and the Father. Amen? And so this is what... He is speaking about here, how does one have gain eternal life? It is by coming to this place of understanding who Christ is and who the Father is and knowing them. There is this uh, passage that is found in John chapter 14, verse 23, which we read probably maybe a, a few months ago or a couple months ago. Look what it says here. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. What does that sound like to you? Personal relationship? Love? Home? Abode? Abiding in? This is... This is this is what Christianity, the message of the gospel brings to people is, is bringing people into a right relation with God, into fellowship with God. And in doing so, it is, it is a, a union that happens with, with us who believe into Christ and therefore we have this eternal life because we are in Him. Amen? So what is this eternal life? And First John, the same writer of the gospel here, in, when he writes uh, one of the letters in 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, look what it says. That's always funny to say that, 1 through 3. 1 through 3, all right? Okay, so let's, hear, let's, let's read here. John, 1 John chapter 1, verses <clears throat> 1, 2, and 3. It says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, 
which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. Truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. What do you think about that? Who is eternal life? Jesus Christ is. And so we have eternal life because we are united to Christ. Amen? And again, Christ is one with the Father and the Spirit. Amen? But that's why I have eternal life. It's because Jesus dwells in me. Amen? Because I have believed the words of the Father and the Son. Because the Holy Spirit has worked in my heart for these wonderful things. Amen? Pretty awesome? And again, just a reminder of, of the unity of the, of the Father and the Son. Look what it says as we read also in John chapter 14. Look what it says in verse 7 and 8. John 14, 7 and 8. We'll just, we'll just go. Maybe I meant 6 and 7. Uh, 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 John chapter 14, verse 6 and 7. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. How do we have eternal life? You have by, by experience, by knowledge of the Father and the Son. And this is what Jesus has communicated, this, this union of, of them too, that they are one. And that's important for us to realize and to understand that. Amen? And just think about this, this union. This speaks of the equality within the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Who can make such claims as Jesus is making here? Again, and this is eternal life that you may, that, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. Wow. No one can go through the Father but by me. Amen? And what about the statement there, too, where it says, uh, the only true God? Is this statement only in regards to the Father? Well, again, the, you know, the, the, the same writer here of the Gospel, he writes again in 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. And look what it says here. 1 John very similar to the prayer of Jesus here, but there is a, a little change that happens, and it is because it is true. So, 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. You already say amen. And it says this, And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him who is true, and we are in Him who is true, in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Bam. <laughs> Isn't that powerful? The Father, is that you may know Him, the only true God, the Father. And then in this verse, same writer, he's not making a mistake. He knows what he's saying. True God, the only true God, Jesus Christ. Do you see that? I mean, this is what we see time and time again throughout the Scriptures in regards to the divinity, the deity of Jesus Christ, that He is God, that He is Yahweh, and that we can put our whole trust in Him. 
And to do so is to bring glory to the Father. And to do so proves that the Spirit of God has been working in your heart and has opened your eyes to see and to stand in awe of who God is, who Christ is. Why do you think Jesus, why do you think Christians, true believing, born again Christians are amazed and in awe of Christ? Think about it. All oh, these Christians always just be talking about Jesus. That's all they know. That's right. Amen. When we glorify Christ, the Father is glorified and it proves that the Spirit is working in us. And that's what we'll do. And that's what we'll continue to do. And once we're done with this temporary life, we're going to enter into the glories of heaven. And then Revelation chapter 5, we will continue that worship and praise of the Lamb of God who is worthy of it for all eternity. Amen. You know, so I guess that would be a question for us today. Are we worshiping and glorifying Jesus? Because if we're not, it is a proof that God has not worked in you through the power of the gospel of Christ. Are you magnifying Jesus Christ? He is worthy. And it's it's a sad thing because here's the thing. I mean, uh, we have the opportunity here and now to respond to the gospel message and to put our trust in Jesus Christ and, and, and for the Holy Spirit to Open our eyes so we can see who he is. But if we refuse, say, I don't need Jesus. I don't need God. The day is going to come when you still have to stand before him and you will be in awe of him, but you will be in all in terror. You will be in all in terror. And listen, that's not the way, that's not what God desires. He desires that all men would come to the knowledge of the Son of God and believe and be saved. So you hear the message of the gospel. Put your trust in Christ. Believe in Him. Amen? You want to be in all of Him today, and then you want to be in complete all in Him later on, but with a big smile on your face. Amen? That's the way we want to see Jesus. Praise God. And with, and, and with Him having a big smile for us. Man, this, this, you know, this is, this is all about Christ. This is all about the Father being glorified. This is all about the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of people. Amen? So let's continue here. Verse 4, I have glorified you on earth. I have, I have finished the work which you have given me to do. Again, so Jesus said, I have glorified you. Father, I have, I have done all the things that you wanted me to do. Again, how did, how did Christ glorify the Father through his life? Amen? How? In, in living a life, having a sinless life declaring all the words of the Father, did all the Father's deeds and miracles, laid His life down as God's Lamb. That's the way Jesus glorified the Father by all of these things. Amen? Look, there's a passage in Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 5 to 10. Let's read. Are you guys still here? Amen. And this is uh, concerning Jesus. Old Testament prophecy concerning Christ. Hebrews 10, 5 to 10, it says, it says, Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you did not de- de- desire, but a body have you have prepared for me. This is the incarnate Christ. Verse 6, In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you have no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. 
previously saying sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire nor have pleasure in them which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the, se the second. And by that will, the will of God, we have been sanctified or set apart through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Woo! <laughs> Pretty awesome. This is what Jesus, this is how Jesus glorified the Father. Doing His will. Complete obedience. And then bringing in the, the, the work of, of us coming to faith and being a people set apart for the glory of God. Do you know you are set apart for God's glory, people? Amen? Church, Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11. Philippians 2. And we can read uh, verses 6 through 11 here. It says, and this is speaking concerning Jesus Christ. Verse, verse 5, let's read from verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. It says verse 6, Who being in the form of God did not consider, consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming into the, in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those in earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory, to the glory of God the Father. So again, how? He became obedient even unto death. That's how he glorified God. Amen. The Father. How else? John chapter 12, chapter 49. Oh, chapter 49. John chapter 12, verse 49 and 50. For I have not spoken my own, by my own authority, but the Father who has sent me gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his, his commandment is, is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the, as the Father has told me, so I speak. He glorified the Father by speaking every word of the Father. How else? John chapter 5, verse 17. John chapter 5. Verse 17, and then I want to read uh, 19 and 20. And it says, uh, but Jesus answered them, my father has been working until now, and I have been working. Verse 19, then Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly I say it to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do for whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows Him all things that He Himself does, and He will show Him greater works than these that you may marvel. You see the union, the unity? Jesus glorified the Father through all the miracles, through all the works that Jesus did. It was, it was doing as Jesus was looking at the Father, what He, what he wanted Him to do. That's pretty powerful. Everything. Everything. That's an example for us too, church. Amen. And how we ought to seek to obey and to follow, follow God. Amen. John chapter 10, verses 17 and 18. John 10, 17 and 18. It says, Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. So Jesus lays down his life. He did all these things to glorify God. To glorify the Father. And the Father, in turn, is glorifying His Son. Amen? And we see that in verse 5. Back to how many are, uh, how many are, are happy we're in verse 5? <laughs> 
but not the spiritual ones. They're like, no, pastor, you should do the whole chapter. Let's stay here for three more hours. <laughs> Just kidding. And it says, and now, oh, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Wow. Talk about, again, Christ making a reference to his deity, to the Trinity. This passage here connects beautifully with John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so Jesus is saying, now, Father, glorify me together with yourself. This is what Jesus is looking forward to. Amen. Again, to, to going back into heaven, back to where he was before. Amen. And so again, this, this statement makes uh, this, this prayer here that Jesus is speaking, it, it, it speaks concerning uh, who he is and where he was before that he was in fellowship with, uh, with the Father. Amen? There was, a, there was a, a, a unity within the Godhead. It's interesting that in, in, in Jesus' prayer here, in chapter uh, 17, verses uh, 24, he says this, Father, I desire that they uh, also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. There was already a fellowship within the triunity of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen? And so Jesus is, is asking here again, He says, Father, now you glorify me to be with you once again. And we know that this is what happens after the resurrection. Jesus' body glorifying, then what happens after that, after 40 days? He ascends into heaven to the right hand of God. Amen? In, in, in John chapter 1, verse 18, it speaks of Christ being in the bosom of the Father. This, is a, 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 this speaks of something close and personal to the heart of God. Amen? Jesus says, I want to go back to the bosom of the Father. I want to go back into that union with the Father. Amen? Because Christ came to earth. There was still that unity between the triunity, but Jesus was speaking about Himself also now, in, in which He is the God-man to be where He knew He was before. Amen? And that's pretty, pretty powerful. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2, look what it says here. Hebrews 12, 2. We're almost done. How many can say amen? <laughs> but we better not say nothing. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a passage in reference to Christ. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Father, glorify me. Jesus is already glorified, but he would be glorified again. Amen? It, it's, it's, it's as though it's already done. That's pretty, pretty powerful. Amen? You know, when we think about the Trinity and we think about God, and, and then, you know, sometimes as believers, uh, or, or, or even people who are trying to understand what the Bible is communicating. There's passages that seem that as though Jesus is less than the Father, and they're trying to figure what, what all this means. Uh, you know, one of the things that, that we see in the Bible is very clear, first of all, that God's Word states that Jesus Christ is God, and that there is one God. And we see three persons in the Bible who are called God, and it is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Not a God, but God. Alright? But here's the thing to understand. You have to remember, 
John chapter 1, the Word became flesh. The Word is the Son of God. He wrapped himself in human flesh. You guys know the, the, the story, the virgin birth, Holy Spirit. Doing, you know, the, the, the work of Christ being conceived, being born. Now here is, what, 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 will, what will his name be called? Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. Amen. But, but here's the thing, and, and it's such a powerful thing because it's something that just blows my mind away in regards to what God did to bring salvation uh, to us. And, and it is this, that God became man in Christ, but then the God-man, Jesus, after his death, he is glorified and he has this new glorified body and he assumes that body for eternity. Think about that. And, and, and Christ, obviously, he is our representative. We will be made like and unto him. You know, we are all right now. Adam is a representative of this. Amen. But Christ is our representative to the new and eternal life that we will be with him. But think about that. So, so now, so, you, so let's, I, I skipped a little point. God is spirit. So before Jesus, uh, you know, before God assumed the, 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 in the, in this human flesh of Christ, God is spirit. That's what we have to see it. Genesis, I mean, uh, John chapter uh, 1, verses 1 and 2, God is spirit. The word is spirit. The Trinity of God, spirit. Fellowship, unity, love between each other. Unity, amen, equal in every aspect. And then the plan of redemption. Roles are, are placed. Father, Son, the, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit in regards to what will happen in bringing about that redemption. And then it was the Word will become flesh, but He will remain with a glorified body for eternity. That blows me away. Part of passage, when is, what is it? Uh, oh, well, I'll share it for another time because I'm going to start preaching on that passage. But anyways, so we think about this stuff and, and we think how amazing that is. But, and we think about how great the cost was for us to be made right with God again. God was pierced. God was pierced. And he will be seen for all eternity and will be reminded of God's amazing and great love for you and me. This is glory. In heaven, we're going to see Jesus, the lamb that was slain, and we're going to be glory. Yeah. Glory to God. My goodness, this is amazing. The cost for my redemption and my eternal life is in Him. See, this is all about the glory of God. Glory of the Father, glory of the Son, and the glory of His people being glorified in Him. So amazing. So amazing. Amen? Let me remind you again what Jesus said in, in John chapter 13, verse 31 and 32. So then, so then he had gone out and Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify himself in himself and will glorify him immediately. Good connection there to that passage. Amen. So what do we do you know, with these passages that, apart from being in awe, of what Jesus is saying about himself and his relationship with the Father and the glory that is being displayed here. Amen? I think it's teaching us too in this prayer that, first of all, we, 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 we believe that Jesus Christ is God, but, but also to trust in the Father as Jesus trusted. Jesus is going to go lay down his life. Will we trust 
the Father. Amen? Will we do the Father's will? I have done everything that you, all the work you gave me to do, Father. Would that be said of us? Are we seeking to do all of the Father's will? Are we seeking to promote the glory of God? To live in a way, uh, to live and to lay down our lives, amen? For His glory. With the hope of God's promises of being glorified with Christ and the Father in the future. What an example of His prayer set for, for you and I as believers as well. Amen? I want to read one last passage. And we are done. And I hope that as we leave this place, that we will be reminded of the prayer that Christ, not only for us, but for Himself, and that it will keep us thinking, God needs to be glorified. God needs to be glorified. Amen? And look what it says here in Revelation chapter 3, verses uh, 21. To him, whoever, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my Father on His throne. <laughs> wow. Talk about glory. This is what Christ purchased. Amen? For you and I. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for Your precious Word today. Lord, the new man that is in us. Your, your Word says that we have been born again. We are a new creature. That new man within us longs to glorify you, God. And I know many times, Lord, we, we fail because of this flesh that we are still battling with today. But Lord, you know our hearts. And you know that we seek to honor and glorify you in our lives. And help us, Lord, that that would be the desire of our hearts, even as it was the desire of our Lord to glorify you, Father, to do everything that honors you. We want to do the same. Help us, we pray. And Lord, I do ask for those who do not know you, for those who have yet to have eyes to be open and to be in all of what you have done and who you are. Father, I pray that the gospel of, the, that the gospel of Christ will bring power into the lives of those who are inquiring, those who are seeking, and that they would believe, and that they would put their trust in the Messiah, the Christ, the eternal life. God, do a mighty work, we pray. And listen, if you are out there and you're listening, maybe you're here today or maybe you're online, I want to tell you the only hope that you have is Jesus Christ. There is no other hope. There is no other way. And you need to be made right with God. Because apart from Christ, we are not right with God. It is only the sacrifice of Jesus that purchases that purchase us our right standing with God through faith. Put your trust in Him. Be made right with God. Continue to put your trust in Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. God's people said, amen. Let's stand to our feet and let's just worship the King of Kings, amen, because He is worthy.
Then I desire more. I desire you. My flesh and heart may fail, but you are my strength, my portion forever. Oh, 